Hello guys, welcome to Stealth Security. In today's video, we are going to look at John the Ripper, a fast password cracking tool. Even though there are other alternatives like Hashcat, John is still one of the best tools in the market. So in this video, we will see what hashes are, how to get some hashes and how we can crack them using John. Let's get started. Before we start working with John, we need to understand what hashing is. So basically we use hashing algorithms in order to protect sensitive data. So what these hashing algorithms do is that they take plain text and convert into hash text. So hash text is a jumbled alphanumeric string, which is impossible to convert back to the plain text. This is the purpose of the hash function. One major use case for hashing algorithms is that you can use them to protect passwords. So if you are storing passwords in a database, if you hash those passwords, even in the case of a data breach, these passwords cannot be converted to plain text. So this is one of the main reasons we use hashing. Different operating systems use different hashing algorithms. For example, Windows uses NTLM hash, Linux uses SHA algorithms. This varies, depends on the operating system. And all your passwords in your operating system are hashed and then stored. I'll make another video to show how to get uh, password hashes from operating systems. Right now, if you understand what hashing is, let's go and get some hashes. To generate hashes, we will use a site like browser link. So what we'll do is we'll create hashes for a very weak password so that John can quickly crack the password and you can understand how John works. So let's try password one, two, three and calculate hashes. We'll take two hashes, the NTLM hash and the SHA one hash. SHA1 is now retired because it is a weak algorithm, but we will use this for demo purposes. Now let's see how to install John. If you're using Kali or Parrot OS, John comes pre-installed. If you're using Ubuntu or Debian based systems, you can use apt command. And if you're using a Mac, you can use Homebrew to install John. Please install John Jumbo instead of just John because John Jumbo comes with a few additional packages that you might need. Once you have finished installation, you can check the installation using the help command. You can also use the help command as a reference tool when you're working with John. There is also another great command that John gives, which is the list formats command. This will give you the list of all the supported hash types. This is important because John can use a specific command instead of the general name for that hash. For example, SHA1 is called raw SHA1. So we have to specify this in order to crack SHA1 passwords. John has a few modes of attack like increment mode, single crack mode, dictionary attack, etc. In this tutorial, we'll be showing you the dictionary attack because it is very common and it is something that you will be using John a lot with. So a dictionary attack will have a dictionary which is a word list, the hash format and the actual hash. If you don't know what a dictionary is, a dictionary is nothing but a list of words which are pre-compiled so that tools like John can use them when performing an attack. For example in this case what John will do is it will take all the words in the word list and it will generate hashes based on the format and compare them with the input hash. So this is how John cracks passwords. There are a lot of common word lists like the raw queue word list which is a list of around 1.4 million exposed passwords. So we'll be using that for this tutorial. If you're using Kali or ParatOS you can find raw queue word list under user share word lists. Now let's create a couple of hash files based on the hashes that we saw earlier and we'll start cracking them with John. First I'm going to crack the NTLM hash. So for that, let's first create a file. So this is the NTLM hash that we saw earlier, I've created a file. Now let's run the command. John, the word list, which is user share word lists rocku.txt the format which is nt and the hash file which is ntlm.txt 
Let's see what John does. Great, John has instantly figured out the password one, two, three. Now let's try cracking the SHA1 password. So I've copied the SHA1 hash. I'm going to create a file. Now we will use the same command, but we will change the format and the hash file. The format is raw SHA1, which we saw earlier, and the hash file, which is SHA.txt. There you go. John has again cracked this password pretty quickly. The reason this was quick is because we have used a very weak password. This is one of the top uh, top 10 commonly used passwords. But as the passwords are stronger, it will take more time for John to crack it. And also, if the password that you're trying to crack is not in your word list, John will not be able to crack it. So please keep that in mind. It's all about the word list. The better your word list, the better are your chances of cracking the password. We have also recently written a detailed article on how to crack passwords using John the Ripper in our blog. So you can check it out if you're interested. If you have any questions, feedback or topic suggestions, please let us know in the comments. Thank you for watching. See you soon with another topic.